from Hollywood, California. Who needs a hot dog? It's the Tom Likas Show. I'll have a bite of that. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are, together again on the radio. And as they say at your local retail establishment, we appreciate your patronage. When I was a kid... In New York, you'd go to your average coffee shop, which was owned by Greek Americans, and uh, the coffee cup at the coffee shop would be the 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 cup would be blue, the color of the Greek flag, the the blue of the Greek flag, and have a picture of a steaming cup of coffee on there, and then it would have it in English, but if the letters would look like they were Greek characters, but in reality it was English. It would say, "We appreciate your patronage." And uh, I never understood why they couldn't just say thanks. <laughs> Patronage. Okay. Uh, thank you for doing business with us. Thank you for dropping by our little retail establishment here. Uh, you guys know that uh, I use the phrase zero tolerance a lot. Uh, we don't have any rules. We don't have any rules for anything anymore. Um. The result is that uh, things get screwed up or we tolerate crap. And I got to a point in my life where I said, you know what? I'm not tolerating crap anymore. One of the things that I have refused to tolerate anymore from women is nagging. It's just not acceptable. It is not acceptable. You nag, you're out. So if you don't like something I do, if it bothers you that much, it's time to go. Because I am not going to change for you. I am not going to compromise. I'm not going to be a different person. Anything I do that you don't like, be prepared. It's part of the package. You're going to have to accept it, and that's that. By the way, I don't ask women to change for me. Nope. I like a certain kind of woman, and if she's not that kind of woman, I don't hang around her. I don't spend my time bitching and moaning and complaining and begging and cajoling and saying, come on, grow your hair long, come on, lose 20 pounds, come on. If you're not what I want, I'm just not with you. That's it. How about the moronic guys who say, I want you to get implants? If being with a chick with big boobs is that important, why are you with a chick who's who's flat? I, I don't understand that. You like big bazooms, you, you go out and find yourself somebody. Seriously. I'm just blown away by the stuff that people uh, tolerate and the stuff that people complain about. Amazing to me. One of the things that women love to nag about, now there may be men who nag about it, but uh, I don't date men, and I've never married a man, so I really don't know. But uh, one of the things that women love to complain about under the guise of being helpful, they're being helpful. That, by the way, is always the excuse for nagging. I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to help you out. I'm trying to help you out by using Chinese water torture and repeating the same request 40 billion times. Because I want to help you. Right? 
And one of the ones that chicks love to use is what you eat. Here we are as we wind down the summer season and we're on the cusp of Labor Day. And many people have that one last cookout. Though here in Southern California, hot weather goes on into October. I don't know why we see Labor Day. You know why people see Labor Day as the end of the summer in California? Because that's how they see it in New York. And we've accepted the New Yorkers' perspective. I mean, uh, the day after Labor Day in New York, the temperature falls off a cliff. So they've got the rest of us morons convinced that Labor Day is the end of the summer. It's not. In Southern California, September's hotter than August. And there have been many years when October is hotter than September. Nonetheless, though, many of you have bought the uh, rhetoric from New York that Labor Day is the end of the summer. And so many of you will prepare to have one last big holiday weekend, one last cookout. And when you do, how many of you are with somebody who is going to start analyzing everything you put in your mouth? Right? Hot dogs. Oh, how could you eat those? Do you know what's in those things? How could you? Now, it doesn't matter what hot dogs you eat. There are kosher hot dogs. There are all beef hot dogs. There are hot dogs that uh, really are essentially pure beef and spices. If you get the really good ones, you know, Vienna beef hot dogs or those Chicago red hots. I mean, th these are quality products. Some people have Kobe hot dogs now. Have you ever had a Kobe hot dog? What a waste of a Kobe piece of Kobe beef. Kobe hot dog. Why you want to put French's mustard on a Kobe hot dog is beyond me. But there are people who uh, who do that. But there are chicks this weekend who will get on you for food. It's not just this weekend. They get on you all the time. Why? Or how much beer are you drinking? How much have you had? Do you know how beer is? Do you know how bad that is for you? And hot dogs, how bad those are for you? Uh, what, what are you doing? Eating another pastrami sandwich? Do you know what's in pastrami? Do you know? Do you know what's in there? Chicks harassing us. Of course, they say they're doing it for our benefit. They're doing it to protect us. They're doing it to take care of us. They're doing it for our health. But in reality, it's just another example of women trying to find imperfections, things they can pick on, because in reality, they do all kinds of unhealthy things. Everything from putting hair dye on their head to putting silicon in their uh, breasts to eating Cinnabons. I mean, chicks do all kinds of unhealthy things, but they love to come after us for the unhealthy things we like to do. By the way, let's throw pot smoking into the mix, okay? <laughs> and you're going to smoke pot again? You just smoked pot last month. Yeah, there you are, you and your friends smoking pot. I'll just leave the room while you guys smoke. I don't even want to be in the same room with that. Now, do you really believe these women have your best interest at heart? Do you really believe they care? This is my question for you. Do you have somebody like this in your life who's constantly going after you for the stuff you eat? What is it that really gets to them? You're at the ball game. Nachos? You're not going to eat nachos. Do you know what? That's not even cheese. What is that stuff they put on... You gonna eat that sour cream and that yellow stuff they call cheese? So how many of you are living with somebody like that who is constantly critiquing what you eat? And do you believe they're doing it for your best interest, or do you believe as I do? That they are doing this for one simple reason. They're always looking for something to criticize. And this is just another thing they can give you a hard time about. You tell me. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I think you're my dad. Really? Really, because... Did I F your mom? I learned, I learned so much from you that I've been getting laid so many times. Is your mom Mexican? 
Yes, yes. Yeah, you, I might be your dad. The Tom Likey Show. Can I argue about what you eat or what you drink, what you consume? Do you think she's doing it for your own good or just because, like most women, she's looking for more things she can criticize you for? It's David on the Tom Likey Show. Hello. Tommy. Davey. Oh, man, you just said it on your intro right there, man. I, I swear to God. I've got a, I know you're going to bust me on this one. I've got a fiance oh, now. Oh, boy. Yeah, let's skip that for a moment. But um, as far as the nagging is concerned, it's, um, it, it involves everything that doesn't involve her. If, if that puts it simply, you know, if she wants to drink, it's like, yeah, it's great. You know, let's go drinking. But if I drink without her, it's, what are you drinking? You know, if she wants to have a hamburger out at, uh, uh, let's say, Chili's, you know, we go to Chili's. If she wants to have a hamburger, oh, cool, have a hamburger. If I want to have a hamburger when we're, you know, going out at a nice restaurant or something and she wants to have a salad, why are you getting a hamburger? Oh, boy. Uh, well, I don't think I'm too off of... Uh, the majority of your listeners. Uh, what do you feel about that? Or I think there is some truth in that. Uh, I have been with women who, uh, uh, for example, they love to party. They love to drink. They love to uh, occasionally eat ice cream when they're having their period or eat like pigs at other times. But it's your problem when they don't want it. Right. Uh, that, by the way, it works the other way, too. How about the chicks who want dessert and you don't? Oh, they, they, they feel uh, righteous to be able to eat it if they want to. No, no, but it gets worse. How about the ones who say, um, I'm going to look at the dessert menu. Honey, what do we want? And you say, well, I don't really have, feel like having dessert. Oh, come on. The creme brulee looks so good. Well, well, go ahead and have creme brulee, but I can't eat the whole thing. Right, right. So, so in other words, on the one hand, they say they care about our health. On the other hand, when you do something good like turn down dessert, then they're haranguing you to eat it. I think they care about us when it's convenient for them. I don't think they care about us, period. This is all about critiquing, criticizing, and complaining. The three C's. This is what women revel in. They're always looking for something else to criticize us for, and I can't stand it. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Father? I'm okay, son. Um, yeah, I got the, a woman like that at home. She likes to complain every time I open up a brew or roll up a joint or, you know. She likes to have a, a nice complaint session and bitch about what I eat and everything else. And it's just, I don't know, it gets on my nerves, but I kind of found a cure for it. See, I just throw her the old sausage, and then I don't get a complaint once. Oh, really? Yeah, you know, you just you just uh, have a nice three or four hour, uh, you know, bang session, and then I don't hear a complaint at all. She just sits and watches TV, and I can do whatever the hell I want. Wow. Say, so it's an all right type of thing, you know. If, if it wasn't like that, I'd probably drop her in a heart. Why do you tolerate the bitching? That's what I don't understand. That That's the thing, you know what I mean? If it wasn't for the situation of, of you know... Just being able to uh, throw the sausage real quick and be done with it, I probably wouldn't be with her. But she's a good woman, you know. I guess you can say that, if there is one. Yeah, but she'd be just as good if she lived at her own place and you lived at your own place. Yeah, that's true. That's true. See, the, the, the thing there is that she lost her place, so she had to come stay with me at mine. No, she did not have to do that. She could always go get another place. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Have you ever noticed women conveniently let their leases expire? That's what it kind of seemed like. It kind of, you know, she had a job and everything, and then it came to, oh, I can't make my rent. You know, I'm going to get kicked out. I don't know what to do. Well, uh, how about you do what most adults do? Stop being a little girl. Make sure you've got a job to pay the rent, and then get an apartment. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, I get tired of having to be the one, you know, to take care of everything. By the way, who pays the rent now? Me. That's my point. I have to pay everything, you know. If she wants to go out, I got to pay for it. Why do you tolerate this? Uh, to tell you the truth, I don't really know. I'm kind of getting sick of it. Well, well you never should have tolerated it. First of all, at 23, you're too young to have a serious relationship. Yeah, that's true. I mean, up until then, I never really had a serious relationship. She's my first one. Yeah, you shouldn't have done it with her. <laughs> Amazing how she had a place 
until you uh, moved in with her and then she, or until, I'm sorry, until you had this relationship with her and then suddenly she doesn't have a place anymore and she needs a place to go. Yeah, it happened about maybe six months after we got together. So why do you, I don't get it. I mean, why don't you kick her out or move out yourself? Well, I guess you could say I, I kind of care for her a little bit. Uh, but I see women on the side, too, so it's kind of... Why do you, wait a minute, you care for her, but you see women on the side. That, that makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> I don't know, it's hard to explain. You know, I've been with her a little bit, so... Yeah, but but like, you're ba but you're banging other chicks secretly. You're living a secret life, and you're paying the bills. Yeah, I mean, you know, I have to have a place to stay myself. So she just yeah, but a, the point is that you don't get that place to yourself. You can't bring any girls home. No, I really to tell you the truth. I really would rather not bring them home. I'd rather go to their house. Fine, but the point is, how about smoking weed or drinking or doing the things you like to do? Yeah, Why should you have to listen to a word of criticism? No, I shouldn't. Do you know the great thing? I've been living alone now for years. Do you know the great thing about it? No criticism. Yeah, you no, don't have to listen to nothing. No telling me all the things that are wrong with me. Well, that's true. Hey, so, could you... Uh, well, we're not done yet. Of... We're not done yet. Oh, no problem, no problem. Why? Why are you tolerating this? I, like I said, I don't know, man. I, it's... It's kind of like a, you know, I don't want to throw her out on her ass. Like I said, we've been together. She, so she's an adult, and it's uh, you haven't told us her age, but it says here on the screen she's older than you. Yeah, that's true. She's she, also been married before, and I haven't. She's an adult. Yeah, that's true. She should take care of herself. How did she do it before you came along? She worked and did everything she had to do, but she, like I said, she was married before. And Wait, I, is she I not haven't. working now? No, no, she's looking for a job, is what she says. Oh, that's what she says. How long has she been looking for a job? Uh, it's been about maybe six, seven months. Six or seven months? Yeah. And she, she, had, a, she had a job uh, about two months ago, but she quit it. She said she couldn't handle it. She couldn't handle it. Could you quit your job because you can't handle it? Oh, no. If I quit my job, I'd be out on my ass in the street. Wow. But that, that's what happens to uh, little girls who do the same thing. <laughs> I don't yeah, see why true. you think this is your responsibility. You can't do that. No, that's that's right. You know, what have you, you told? What have you told her? I can't stand my job. I need you to go to work while I stay home. She'd probably flip her lid. Right. <laughs> and how hard is it to find a job? Not that hard. Has she tried McDonald's? There's there's people everywhere that are willing to hire you if you're willing to do the work. Burger King. Yeah. Wendy's. There's grocery stores. There's work everywhere. Ralph's, Vons, El Pollo Loco. <laughs> Tell me there's no work out there? Yeah, but same excuse. You make a lot of sense. Man. Maybe, you just <laughs> Maybe you should just what? <laughs> well, we're losing you there, Chris. Damn. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Christy on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi Tom. Hi Christy. I was just calling in. I was hearing you comment about women that are nagging about what men do. Zero tolerance policy. Yeah. You and your filthy mouth. Jesus. When are these people going to learn? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Eric on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hey Tom, how's it going? Great. Okay, uh, check this out. Uh, when I was eighteen, I was dating a chick who was in college, right? And uh, I was still in high school at the time. She was picking me up. You know, I didn't have a license at the time. I didn't even have a job, and she was paying for everything. Okay, so, I mean, at first I thought everything was cool. I thought, you know, I was getting some. Everything was great. This chick starts blaming me for gaining weight. Says that we're eating out too unhealthy and that I'm basically, like, trying to make her fat so that way other guys won't check her out. And it was just, it was, it was ridiculous, to be honest with you. That'll teach you how to have a girlfriend at 21. 
that will teach you to have a girlfriend at 21. Well, this was when I was 18. I, I actually, yeah, I do have a girlfriend now. Why? Uh, I, I have no idea. I, you have yeah. no idea? Do you always do things and you have no idea why you do them? No, no, I mean, she's a really cool chick. I mean, uh, That doesn't mean I, you need a girlfriend. Be, you, you can have sex with her. You can drop in on her now and then. She can be a friend with benefits. True, true. But, uh, yeah, it's just uh, that chick thought I was trying to actually fatten her up, which I thought was pretty yeah. pretty dumb. Well, <laughs> she really had issues. Yo, that, that's not even... That's not even the beginning of the issues that she had. Well, you picked her, and I have no idea why you did. <laughs> hey, can you take me out with a bong hit, Tom? I certainly can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Brad on the top like his show. Hello. Hello, yeah, I know why these guys, these guys tolerate these girls. Can I use the, uh, the D word? Uh, hello? I don't know which word you're talking about, so if you're not sure, don't use it. Well, these guys, these guys are pussies. These, uh, these girls that are nagging, I know all about it. I came home one, you know, before I listened to you, I was in a relationship, came home, one day from work, just decided that uh, I wanted to beat her to the punch. And when she came home from work, all of my things were out of the apartment, and she was dropped. And you're right, just the things you've been saying, they've, they, they've sunken in right now, and I get it now. Like, yes, yeah, she's a cool girl. Fine. Why do you need a girlfriend? No reason at all. None at all. These... These guys are lame. They don't think uh, they can get something better, and that's just they're young and they're pussies. They need to man up. Yeah, that's certainly true. This girl, she she had a kid, and she ended up. It, it was a disaster. I I got arrested under false pretenses, and the case was dropped, and it was insane. And like, I'm a normal guy. I've never had. Any priors and uh, come from a good family and a good education? Yeah, and how long did and you stay with her after that? I left her, came back after a month because I was an idiot. I was a little puss, and I didn't get it. I started listening to you more and more, and now you just, I get it now. I understand. And the, these guys, you know, some of them, uh, it's sad. It's a shame. And I don't, not ever gonna tolerate a woman nagging me about eating a hamburger or ice cream. And I'll just leave her at the restaurant. I've done that before, actually. Cause, uh, she was talking to the waiter. I said, all right. Just left. Unbelievable. Did she blow up your phone after that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they always do. No matter what you do, they always come back. And so that, that's, you just have to know that in the back of your head. Wow. And uh, drop them as fast as you can, as fast as you can. It's much more funner. It's much more fun having your own place and no one Much more funner, you. yes. It's way funner. Mm-hmm, I love it. No, it's a shame how many pusses. There are out there. Oh, I know. I make my living talking to them. <laughs> so uh, you're the man. You're the man. I get it now. Uh, take me out with the dump that bitch and doggy style. Dump that bitch doggy style. <laughs> Let's see what we have here. Dump that bitch. <laughs> Yes. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Paul on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom. How's hey. it going? Good. Uh I got the situation going on. I've been dating this uh girl for about four years now. She's got a little baby boy. Strike uh, one. And 
and she wants, uh, you know, she wants to get married. And, you know, right now, I don't know if I want to commit myself to her, but, you know, I'm feeling kind of trapped here. So I need some Why? Well, what do you mean you feel trapped? Uh, does she have a, are, are you, are you no, calling, been, wait, 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 are you locked in an apartment? Are you calling uh, from a hostage situation? No, 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 not like that, Tom. So why do you feel trapped? Well, you know, I uh, feel close to the kid. Uh, she really doesn't got anybody. Uh, really well, the fact that she doesn't know. have anybody, that's not your problem. Uh, her mom just don't give a hell and. That's not your problem either. So I'm just I'm just lost, you know. I, I just feel maybe I really don't want to be committed. I don't want to get married right now, but I know that's what you want. So well, that's what that, she me. can't have it. And uh, what's she gonna do? Leave you? Mm, probably not. That's my point. Just so say just, no. Just say no. Yes. All right, Tom. I mean, I I mean what, what, how can you possibly be trapped? You hold all the cards. That's not your kid, is it? No, it's not. You're not living with her, are you? Yeah, we are. Why'd you do that? She didn't have a place to live. And oh, she no, why didn't she have... Why didn't she... she, she wait, 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 so stop. Figured, stop. Why didn't she have a place to live? She didn't have a place to live. What you know? adult in the 21st century can't get a job and figure out how to sign a lease on an apartment? You know, her mom threw her out, so I felt... How, how, wait, it says here on the screen she's 32 years old. What's she doing living with her mother? She don't got a job, I guess. Don't you see that as a red flag, Paul? Well, you know... She had a kid, Tom. What can I do? You know, I'm sa it's not your fault that she had a kid. Did you knock her up? No, I did not. So it is not your fault that she's in this predicament. So the situation is just say no and don't feel committed to anything. It's not my kid. She shouldn't be like living that. with you. Do you understand that if, if things don't work out between the two of you, she could ultimately get child support from you, and it's not even your kid. All right, all right. Do you know that? Yeah, I know that. I know that. And you don't care? I do care, but you, you know. would be. Let me let's review. You would be happy to pay child support until the kid is eighteen or maybe even twenty-one years old. You'd be okay with that? No, I'm not. I but that be. could happen. It's not my kid. But that could happen. If I would decide to marry her, well, even whether you'd marry her or not. Wow. Sounds too deep for me, uh, Tom. Don't you do not you do any research before you uh, get into these situations? No. I yeah. do no research on that, Tom. Well, guess what? You are putting yourself into a very bad position here. So what do I do, Tom? Just tell her, look, no commitments, no ring, no wedding. No nothing. And by the way, find a place to live. And we need a separation for a while, right? Not for a while. You need her to find her own place to live with her kid. Just to, just to try to get her out. Well, if that's what you have to say to get her out, say whatever you have to say to get her out. By the way, let me guess. Who pays the rent at your place? I do. <laughs> How did I know? Oh. Yeah. Who pays... You're the master, that's why. Yeah. Um, you're the master. Who pays for the groceries there, Paul? I do. So now you pay for the groceries, not for one person, as you were before. Not for two people, but for three. 100%. Uh-huh. Got utilities? Who's paying for those? So what do you say, Tom? Just I'm asking you a now. question. I'm asking you a question. Yes. You pay the, so you pay the electric, the gas. You pay for the cable TV. Tom. I pay for the car payment. I pay everything. You pay her car payment. Is your name on the uh, deed to that car, on the uh, title? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Your I name is? for it. Wait, you own the car? I credit. Wait, you own the car? Yes. So it's your car? Well, I, I we have two cars. I financed her one car because she needed a car. Whose name is on the title of her car? My name. Right, so it's yours? It's mine. 
And the only reason your name is on it is because she had bad credit or because uh, you couldn't get insurance or something like that. Exactly, exactly. Right. Exactly. She, she's taking you for a ride. Yeah. Sounds like it. That's what it is. Why do you tolerate it? I don't know, Tom. I just felt bad for the little kid. and It's not your fault. Where's his father? You know what? I have no idea who his father is or where his father's at. So you don't even know what this is all about? You, yeah. How much do you know about this woman? I know her for about, uh, say, about four years. And you have no idea who her ex is? Well, she lived up in South Dakota, and she came down to California about, I guess, about five years ago, pregnant with the baby. She explained to me, and somebody from South Dakota was the father of the child. So, you know, I never investigated the father or anything like that. This guy might be looking for his kid? That, that remains unseen. That I don't even know. So you don't even know. And I by the way, know. what happened? Did her parents, I don't, I don't even, did her parents follow her down to California? What's that, Tom? I'm sorry? Did her parents follow her to California? No, no. So dad, when she was living, uh, when she was living with her parents, wait, wait, wait. When she was living with her parents, where was that? In South Dakota. So how did you meet her? I met her through a friend. Oh, remember to thank him very much. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah, who was this friend, and how did how did he introduce you to her? Well, the friend I know from uh, school, and the friend knew her. When she went up to South Dakota for some business for about two years and met her a couple of years ago, and she came down to her and called her up and said, I'd like to come down to California. And you saw some easy sex coming your way. And this is how they met up, and she introduced me to her. She was staying with her, and... that's how. So I why couldn't up. she continue living with her friend? Because I guess I got caught up in that, Tom. I got caught up in that, and I told her to move in with me. So it was kind of my fault. <laughs> Get yourself out of this situation, Paul. Just say no, right, Tom? Just say no to all of it. Do you we own? Need a separation. You, we need a separation. You, tell her whatever you have. To tell her. Do you own that house? No, no, I'm renting. When is your lease up? Uh, actually, next year sometime. Next year sometime. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, it's a two-year lease. All so. right. And is her name on the lease? No. Of no. course not. No. That way, she's not legally responsible for anything. No, she ain't responsible for anything there. Aye, or anywhere. What's that, Tom? Or anywhere. She doesn't even have to support her kid. Exactly. Why, why, why do you allow this to happen? Ignorance, ignorance. I've been I'll trying to it. listen to you. I've been trying to listen to you. All right. You, Tom. Kick I can. her Tom? out. Kick. Oh, kick her out. Jesus, you're killing me. Tom, Tom, Tom. Like this. 1 800 5800 Tom. All women want to do is break your heart and break your wallet, so hit it and quit it. Hit it and quit it. It's the Tom Likes Show. From Hollywood, my name is Tom Likes. I'm here. At one 800 800 tom thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. And um, my question for you is simply this. Are you with a woman who constantly nags you about what you eat, what you drink, what you smoke? Constant nagging, constant critiquing. 
constant criticizing all of the guys of, honey, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I care about your health, honey. I just want you to live a very long life, honey. I just want to help you live a long life. I just want to help you. Every time I see you stuffing a fat burger in your mouth, I think, my honey won't live to see his 60th birthday. But uh, I say it's all in the name of critiquing, criticizing, and complaining, the three C's. And I'm amazed how many of you tolerate this. I'm amazed how many of you tolerate it. I have a zero tolerance policy. I absolutely don't tolerate this stuff. <laughs> the minute it starts, that's the end. Done. And I don't know why you guys put up with it. I don't understand why anybody puts up with this. Do you live with somebody like this? Do you tolerate this? Do you believe she's looking out for your best interests? Or is she just looking to continue dragging you down? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number here. It's 1-800-5800-866. Are you going to have another drink? That's two whole drinks you've had. You, you, you're going to drive now? You don't know what you're driving. You're drinking. You're dri Come on. You've had two light beers, honey. You can't be doing that. Oh, God. They kill me. They kill me. I don't know why or how you tolerate it. Are you with a woman who does this? Are you with a woman who is constantly haranguing you, harassing you? nagging you seriously I, when I say zero tolerance policy it only takes one time and I'm out 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number Noel on the Tom Ligas show hello how you doing I'm Professor? okay yes um, yeah I got one I dated her in high school and she used that oh you know don't be eating that you're gonna put weight on if I want to have a fat attack I'll eat a hamburger that's my, that's my prerogative it's just a way for them to control you that's all it is exactly and it's just if if you if you're once your testicles up on the man on the on the on a mantle then hey you can be a man you can be a man girl or or whatever you want to call it but uh, when it when it comes to whatever I want to eat whatever I want to drink. It's my body, not yours. Well, that's how I feel about it, but uh, so do you tolerate this? Oh, no. No, no, no. I dropped kicked her to the curb a long time ago. How, how did she react to that? that? How did she react to that? <laughs> She's like, well, it's because I love you. You know, it's because you want to control me. <sighs> I've been listening to the professor. It's too long to be sitting there just taking that. <laughs> I just don't understand it. I don't know why you guys put up with it. I, I just don't. Life is too short. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, Pops. If it wasn't for you, I'm sure I'd probably still be in that relationship. I'm sure that's true. Yeah. But no. uh, I'll tell you what. If, if it wasn't for you, yeah, I, uh, I I learned a long time ago, listen to the 101, that uh, you're, you're definitely right. No doubt about it. Xavier on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah, Tom. First time, long time. Thank you. Um, I have a woman that's exactly like you're talking about. Nagger? All she does is complain at me about what I'm doing and everything like that. And so what do you do? And, I mean, I, I don't, I really don't follow your rules. I'm an idiot, but... I should be listening to your rules. I put up with it. Why do you put up with it? I I guess because I'm getting laid. So you have no game, is that right? No. Uh, uh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have no game. But That's the reason you put up with it. I mean, if you had game, you wouldn't worry about dumping her. That's true. I'll tell you how much game I have. I've gotten divorced four times. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, I'm trying to do something about it. 
You start nagging me and giving me crap, you are out the door. And you ask, you ask some of the, the victims of the past, they'll tell you. Yeah, that's true. I See, kicked them I the hell kid, out. I have a kid, too. How old are you? 23. Why did you do that? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I, I'm an idiot. I had a kid before I started listening to you, and that's, that's what happened. But, I mean, think about it. Forget about listening to me. Oh, how old were you when you had a kid? How old were you when you got somebody pregnant? Uh, about 19. Didn't you think to yourself, my God, my whole life was out of me. Why would I want to knock anybody up? Uh, no, I didn't think about that. What did you think? Um. I'm never going to amount to anything, so if I knock a chick up, what's the big deal? No, I was thinking I was getting laid. Yeah, but didn't you think about what might happen not using a condom? Uh, I didn't think about a condom. Oh, You're all killing me. <laughs> mm, you know what's funny? Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Visit our MySpace page as well. It's all kinds of things happening there. Go to MySpace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. It's the Tom Likas Show.